Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. The San Carlos Education Foundation, the San Mateo County Library, and The Reading Bug are proud to present to you Jenny Holm, the award-winning author who is best known for her fantastic Baby Mouse series. Jenny is a New York Times bestselling children's author and three-time Newbery Honors recipient. She is the author of The Favorite Baby Mouse and Sunny Side Up series, as well as the Squish series, The 14th Goldfish, and her newest book for middle graders, The Lion of Mars. You can purchase The Lion of Mars and any of Jenny's books at The Reading Bug in downtown San Carlos. Thank you so much, Jenny. We are so excited that you are here with us today. Hi, I'm so happy to be here too. Hi, everybody. I am actually an old neighbor of yours. I lived in Foster City for about I want to say four years, and um, we have since moved down to Southern California, but I still miss Foster City, and I miss, most of all, I miss The Reading Bug, my favorite bookstore ever. So anyway, I'm so happy to be here with you today, and if I'm talking a little funny, because I feel like I am, it's because I just got braces, so my heart is with every teenager out there. Um, so what I'd first like to do is show you a picture of where I live, or a little, give you a little tour of my office. So after leaving Foster City, we moved down to Southern California, and I live in a little town called Costa Mesa, and we are about 20 minutes from Disneyland, so we are south of you. Now, I'm going to get up and give you a little tour of my studio, and usually my cats are up here, but for some reason they are hiding today, so my, uh, my studio is on the top floor of my house. It's bright and sunny. Um, I have a bookcase. And then down there at the other end is where my husband usually sits. He, he is a video game designer, so he has lots of strange video game stuff. And then I think my very favorite part of the office is that I have a nice sunny deck. Because sometimes when you get writer's block, the best thing to do is just walk outside. So I'm going to show you my sunny deck. And it's actually, uh, it's a little cool today, but we are having um, nice pretty sunshine down here. All right, I am so excited to talk to you guys about my books, but especially about Baby Mouse, because I understand there are a lot of Baby Mouse fans out there. So the thing about Baby Mouse is that I make it with my brother, Matt. Now, can you imagine working with your brother? That'd be a little crazy, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to share my screen. Just give me one minute. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. Let me put this down. Okay, there's already two questions. And coming up here. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. I think it is on Baby Mouse. All right, here we go. So how did my brother Matt and I start working on Baby Mouse? Well, I'm going to show you how we got started and how we work together now. So a long time ago, in a suburb far, far away, bonk, that's how Baby Mouse started. It started in our backyard with my little brother sitting on top of me. Ugh, typical. He used to sit on top of me in the kiddie pool. Well, you know what? The great thing about what happens is eventually you grow up and I got to sit on top of him. So when we were kids, we were pretty normal. But the, the strange thing about my family, or not strange, but different, was that I was one of five kids, and I was the middle child, and I was the only girl. So that's a lot of boys. And when I was growing up, there were a lot of boy things in the house, like matchbox cars, and Star Wars action figures, and stinky socks. But there were also a lot of comic books, because all of the boys in my house just love to read comics. And you might say it started because of this guy, the biggest boy in the house, our dad. He was a huge comic book reader. And he got us all started reading comics. And the comic he got us started reading was his favorite comic when he was a kid. It was called Prince Valiant. And it was a comic strip that used to run in the newspaper. And it was like kind of an adventure comic. It took, takes place during the time of King Arthur. And so it was really kind of fun and exciting. And, and I loved, I loved Prince Valiant. But I also loved what my brothers were reading. 
And let's see, my older brothers were reading original paperbacks of this guy who you probably know, our friend Snoopy. And my little brothers were reading Calvin and Hobbes. But of course, we read all of the superhero comics. And I know you guys, if I was in person, I would have you shout them out because you know them really well. We read Batman and Superman and Spider-Man and Plastic Man. Hmm. Everybody forgets Plastic Man, but I personally think he would have made a pretty awesome uh, movie these days. Now, the thing about all these superhero characters, they all had one thing in common. They were all boys. See, when I was growing up in the 1970s, that's like ancient history. That's in the olden days, in the last century. There were not a lot of ladies in comics. There was one, and I know she's enjoying a great comeback right now, but I didn't really identify with her. See, that's a picture of me when I was in third grade, and that's a picture of Wonder Woman. And although I know everybody's loving her these days, I didn't really relate to her because I really wanted there to be a girl who was my age and kind of looked like me when I was a kid. Somebody like Baby Mouse. And luckily for me, I have a very talented younger brother named Matt. This is his fancy author photo. But when I think of him, I usually think of him as this silly little kid. So he was kind of a funny little kid. That's a picture of my dollhouse and he's actually holding up the roof of my dollhouse with his head. Strange. And he loved, he loved to run around in these red boots. Well, the other thing about my brother Matt was that from a very young age, he loved to draw. He was a real doodler. He was one of these kids, no matter where he was, he had a pad of paper and he was doodling. And he actually started drawing his very first comic when he was in fifth grade. And this is a picture of it. It was a pretty classic four panel comic. So, which is the kind of comics that used to run in the newspaper and still do run in some of the newspapers. It's basically, you tell a story in four panels and his comic was called The Fast Lane. And it was about this uh, alien boy and his alien family. And it was pretty good. I mean, you could see even from then, like this was pretty good for a fifth grader, but he kept working on his art and he drew this all through middle school and high school. He went to college and he studied English and art. And then when he got out of college, he drew another comic strip this one it's another comic strip about aliens from outer space this time it's from an alien from outer space who becomes elvis's private chef see my brother he had outer space on the brain he was obsessed with ufos and going to the moon and aliens which is probably why the very first drawing of baby mouse kind of looks like an alien right that's his first drawing of baby mouse and it doesn't look like the like the baby mouse we know and love in fact if you go back, it has the exact head as the alien in this comic strip. And he forgot a lot of things, you know, his first baby mouse kind of was all nose. There was no mouth. She looked very cross. Um, he forgot her tail. Uh, he actually often forgets her tail. But like anything in life, usually the first time you do something, you're probably not very good at it. So he practiced and practiced and practiced. And eventually he drew a pretty good version of Baby Mouse. And after that, we made a lot of Baby Mouse books. We made 20 Baby Mouse books. But along the way, we created another friend. His name is Squish. And he's small and microscopic and green. And he is an amoeba. And he got his own series. And he was inspired, actually really inspired by my brother, Matt. In fact, you might say Squish looks a lot like my brother Matt did when he was a kid. He was in fact the inspiration. And Squish has a bunch of books now. Now, how do we make a graphic novel? So you might hear about how writers make chapter books or not are, you know, just no normal novels or how they make picture books. But a graphic novel is something between a chapter book and a picture book. It's got a lot of art, but it also has a fair amount of text. Well, what we do is my brother, Matt and I, we collaborate. 
And we collaborate long distance. In fact, we don't live anywhere near each other. So I live in California and Matt lives in upstate New York. And we've never lived near each other since we first sold the books. So we've had to figure out how to work long distance and this is how we do it. Basically, we divide our responsibilities. I do most of the writing and do Matt does most of the art, although we do help each other along the way. We always start in the same place. We start with story. So we come up with the story together and I write it using a storyboard. Now a storyboard is a cool way that uh, animated movies are made and animated commercials. It's basically like a roadmap to making um, something visual. So this is a storyboard. It's really simple. It's something you can do at home yourself. It's really just three rows and, and, and four, um, uh, you know, four towers, four whatever. I can't remember the word. Anyway, so it breaks down all the parts of a comic book. So the first row is narration, right? So narration in a comic is what the narrator is saying. So the narrator in a comic often sets the scene like the time of day or back at the bat cave, or in the case of baby mouse, the narrator often um, has something kind of fun and snarky to say. Then I write out the action and the action is where um, I describe what's happening in the scene. And then finally, I have the dialogue and the dialogue is what the characters are saying to each other. And so in graphic novels, we know that a character is speaking to each other because we see speech bubbles. All right, so I'll write my storyboard and then I'll give it to my editor and I'll give it to Matt and they'll put their two cents in. And when everybody's 100% happy with the story, then Matt gets down to drawing. And so when we make Baby Mouse, part of it is very low tech and part of it is high tech. So right now we're in the low tech part of making Baby Mouse. First, he does what we call thumbnails. He just takes a plain old sketch pad, nothing fancy, and a pencil, nothing fancy. And he draws quick little sketches of what he thinks um, the action is I've described. And the size of the sketches are really quite small. They're just the size of a thumbnail. So he'll do that for the entire book. And then he'll scan all of that art and he'll send it to me. And now we're still in the low tech part of making Baby Mouse or Squish. We'd use the same process for both of them. So then Matt sends me all of the art and I print it out and I, I settle down at my desk or a big table with some scissors and some sticky glue. And I lay out how the art is gonna look on the page. I cut out his art and I glue it to the page. And this is a really fun process for me because usually writers are not that involved in the art, but also it's a great opportunity for us to change things. So sometimes you can see on this layout on the upper left corner, like Matt has drawn those first three drawings and it's Baby Mouse and Wilson and they're talking about going to see a monster movie um, called Attack of the Giant Squid. And I thought, wouldn't it be funny actually if like the hall, the school hallway suddenly turns into a monster movie. So this is an opportunity where then I kind of added a funny scene where like um, a squid tentacle emerges from the locker and, um, and kind of like attacks Baby Mouse. So after I lay out the entire book, I send, I scan my layouts and send them back to Matt. And he is still working low tech now and he gets a Sharpie marker and he does a marker version of the sketches. And then when everybody's happy with our layouts, then we go high tech. So from here on out, Matt does everything using his Macintosh computer. He does the final art digitally. So he has a drawing tablet that is connected to his computer. It's kind of like if you played with a Nintendo DS, you know how you have a stylus and when you draw on your DS, you can see what your, you can see the art. It's totally similar to what Matt does. So he'll do the art in layers. First, he'll do what we call the inks, which are just the black and the white. Then he'll do one shade of color. So for Baby Mouse, that's pink. And for Squish, it's green. And then he has to add the text. 
So traditionally in comics, like uh, say DC or Marvel comics, like Batman or Superman comics, there is somebody called a letterer and they actually go through and they hand letter in all of the text. But Matt and I do not have that much patience and we have too much work to do. So Matt came up with kind of a cool idea. He created a font, which is a, a style of letters based on his own handwriting. So then he just um, inserts um, the text using the baby mouse font. So this is a font, the way those letters look are how Matt's uh, own handwriting looks. And that is what the final pages look like. Good job, baby mouse. All right, I am gonna bounce back from this PowerPoint. Bink! And I'm going to close it and try to stop sharing. Hang on one second. Why can I not? Do, 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 stop sharing. Yay! And I am mostly so excited to hear questions from friends in the audience from my old hometown. So if you have a question, I think that Miss um, Michelle from the library is going to help to facilitate that. Right. So we will take questions in the Q&A. So if you have questions um, you, that you've already thought of, you can put them in the Q&A and we'll um, ask them. We'll ask Jenny the questions. And then if you want to ask Jenny the question, your own question, you can also raise your hand. So think about a question. It's an opportunity to talk to an author. Ask Baby and, Mouse. <laughs> or ask Baby Mouse. Alrighty. So we have a question from Talia, age five. Did you used to say typical when you were a kid? Uh, I didn't say it, but I started saying it. That's a good question. I started saying it when I was writing Baby Mouse because um, like funny things would happen and she would have the things she didn't want to have happen would happen to her and she'd say, ah, oh, typical. And I always imagine she kind of does that uh, sound before she says it, but it's hard to put that in the comic. But good question, Talia. And then I think Safia, age eight, asked, how long does it take you to write each book of Baby Mouse? That's a good question. So, you know, for the, the basic Baby Mouse books, they take us about a year to, to make the entire thing. Like it might take me three months to write it, but then it takes Matt and we're passing it back to each other. So I might be writing a new Baby Mouse book and Matt's um, doing the art for another baby mouse book. So we're passing the project back and forth to each other. So I'm usually working on what on something else. So right now I'm working on writing a new baby mouse book and Matt has just started illustrating the baby mouse book before it. Um, so my brother Matt actually is the one that draws the cover. So like for here, this baby mouse book. He drew this cover and usually he comes up with a couple of ideas and he shows our editor and they pick one. And for the, this is kind of a thick cardboard. And so he gives them a picture and they print it on at the printer. Good question. I did. We made it as a series. In fact, when we first started making the books, we made the first two, Queen of the World and Our Hero, at the same time. We always saw it as a series. Really good question, Miss Stacy. Okay, some questions in the chat. Um, one was, how did you decide um, for Baby Mouse to be a mouse instead of a different animal? And this is from Chloe, age five. Yeah, great question, Chloe. So. It's a very weird story. And it's a bit of a secret, but I trust you guys because you're from my old hometown. So the story of how Baby Mouse was a mouse, it's kind of complicated. So um, first of all, when I was growing up, I had, like I mentioned, I had all these brothers and I showed you that picture at the beginning of Matt holding up the mouse of the dollhouse with his head. So it was a very elaborate dollhouse, but instead of dolls, I had these little gray dressed mice. And so we called it our mouse house. So I always kind of had mice on the brain. But then the other thing was that uh, when I was a kid, my grandmother had a poodle, a gray poodle. And this poodle was like um, a pedigree poodle, you know, like you could take to like the doll shows, like the puppy bowl. 
And um, she was a very funny dog because she could sing happy birthday. If you started singing happy birthday, she would yap along with you like, ar, 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 ar. really, and she would run in a circle. So you just, if you were in the room and you just started singing it, she would start yipping and running in a circle. And the name of this funny singing poodle was Baby Mouse. So Baby Mouse the mouse is actually named after a singing poodle. It's bewildering, I know. All right. Oh, that's such a good, great story. Um, and would you consider different animals for different books? Yeah. I mean, so we obviously, we for Squish, we used an amoeba because nobody's, you know, the amoebas and paramecium have been neglected by um, the world of children's literature. So somebody had to do it. And might as well be us. In fact, I have a fun Squish thing to show you guys. So our big news about Squish is that it has been made into an animated TV series. And I know it's so exciting. It's airing on HBO Max now. But um, the producers who are so sweet, they sent me a copy of the first episode and they said I could share it. So I'm going to share with my friends from my old town. So I'm going to show you a little sneak peek of Squish. So let me, I'm going to share the screen with sound. And then let me go up here. I'm going to open it up. Come on, baby. Here we go. Let me open it wide. All righty. Once upon a time, in a lovely little pond. Hello, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> hey, MC Squish is in the house. I got me a mic, and now I'm going to rock it. Take it down to small pond where my boys are microscopic. My boys are microscopic. This girl's are microscopic, too. <laughs> I'm a single cell dude with some Boku attitude. Pot and Peggy make my crew in a world of germs and goo. It's a world of germs and goo, goo. A world of germs and goo, goo, goo. Blah, 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 Straight in a small pond, it's squish! Oh, I'm not gonna be late. Not gonna be late. Excuse me, the part is coming through. I will not be late! <laughs> You're late. That's one detention for being tardy, and another one for frowning. Excuse me. Oh, I can't be late again. Sorry, sorry. No running, and no more excuses. Twenty detentions for you. Oh, come on, Principal Planaria. How many rules do you have? Not enough. Without rules, this school would fall into complete chaos. Now you know the consequences of rule breaking. Detention? Again? At least I know everyone here. Yo, Rob Ram, my bacterial brother! Jerry the germ, how's it spreading? <coughs> Parasites are out of sight! No yelling in detention! All right, so that is a little bit of... Here we go, oops. There's a little bit of Squish. I'm gonna stop sharing and going back to our thing. So that's a little bit of Squish. So if you have HBO Max, check it out. Um, it's airing. We will go back to fun um, questions from our audience because it looks like there's quite a lot, my goodness. So Baby Mouse is published by Random House. So they are the publishers that do The Cat in the Hat. And then my Sunny books are published by Scholastic. It's a good question. I, I love that all these writers, young writers are thinking ahead. I think it is. It is public, yeah. You can, I'm not sure where, um, where you buy it. Um, but it is public, so you can get that baby mouse font somewhere. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to ask my brother. All right. Okay, another popular question we're getting is, where do you get your ideas for baby mouse? Ah, 
Ah, great question. So let's see, baby mouse. Hmm. Well, when I was a kid, I had really messy whiskers. I kind of do have messy whiskers still, right? Kind of fuzzy. Um, I had a best friend who was a boy. There was kind of a mean girl who was like a cat. I guess you could say that pretty much I'm baby mouse. So a lot of the baby mouse ideas I get are from when I was a kid. So I'll tell you a funny one. Um, for instance, in Camp Baby Mouse, I'll show, I can show you. There's a scene where she's um, at a sleepaway camp and she's sleeping in the bunk. Here she's sleeping in a bunk, right? And she's asleep and she rolls out, bonk, bonk, and she rolls right out of the A-frame cabin. And that happened to me when I was at Girl Scout camp. I was in an A-frame cabin on the top bed. I'd never slept on a bunk bed before. I fell off it onto the ground and out the side of the cabin. So yeah, you can, I, I identify with Baby Mouse because she's pretty much me. Um, we have another question from Ching Hang Ko. Do you disagree with your brother when writing stories? Oh, I, you know, we get asked that a lot. So I would say that we don't disagree too much and mostly because he is six years younger than me. He's the baby. And the, the person we disagreed with most was the, is the brother between us because he was like two years younger than me. Um, and I think the reason we don't disagree as much is because we both worked in other jobs before we, we started making books together. I worked in advertising and Matt was an editor for magazines. And in both of our jobs, we had to learn to take criticism. And so now when we collaborate, if somebody thinks somebody doesn't work, isn't working, like if I think um, a drawing of his isn't quite working, or if he thinks um, dialogue I've written isn't working, it's usually the case that it's true, so. Wow, I mean, you guys are so good. So. We made them at the same time. One, the publisher wanted them to come out at the same time. They wanted to publish two books at the same time because they think that kids really like to re have like more than one book from the same character. But also the other reason we did it was just to figure out who she was. And by writing the two books and making them at the same time, it helped us to figure out like what the book was going to look like and who Baby Mouse's friends were, what her school was going to look like, all those things. So it was a good, really good exercise actually. You can, it's, um, you can find it on Amazon and um, Apple iBooks, but um, we are big fans of The Reading Bug and they are such a fun uh, bookstore and they help organize this. So if you wanna have a, a nice paper copy, you should go to The Bug, but you can get it online too. Okay, a question from Benji, age three. What is Baby Mouse's favorite food? Oh, well, I think obviously cupcakes. Baby Mouse loves cupcakes because I love cupcakes, especially the frosting, the best part of the cupcake. And then we have another um, question from Jackson, age seven from Pacifica. What were your favorite books when you were little? What a great question, Jackson. So my favorite book was a book called The Black Cauldron. And it was a fantasy book by a writer named Lloyd Alexander. And it was kind of like the Harry Potter of its day, a lot of action and adventure. Um, and so I always loved that book. It was made into a very terrible Disney movie, so. It's Baby Mouse movie, not yet. We have our fingers crossed that someday Baby Mouse will be a TV series. So I think if everybody, you know, crosses their fingers and shakes their whiskers, maybe it'll happen. So good question. So this, I'm gonna pan my computer up. See, that's Baby Mouse Tales from the Locker poster. So we made Baby Mouse Tales from the Locker because we made 20 Baby Mouse books. And in the time that we were making it, which was about 10 years, a lot of our readers grew up. They went from first grade all the way through middle school. And so they kept asking us what happens when Baby Mouse goes to middle school. And also around that time, my oldest child, who's now almost 18, he was in middle school. So we started, there was like a lot of middle school going on in the house. So that's why we started doing Tales from the Locker. And yes, I'm very excited to announce we're going to be making, we're in the process of making a new Baby Mouse book. Um, but the old style, just all, all graphic. 
and it's going to be full color and it's going to be a bit longer. So that will probably be out in about two years, but we are working hard on it right now. So excellent question. All right, we have another question um, from Kennedy, age nine. Why did you become an author? Oh, well, honestly, I wanted to be a ballerina and it did not work out when I was in ballet school, when I was in fourth grade. Um, every time I would have a, I'm sorry, when I was four years old, not in fourth grade, every time I would have a ballet recital instead of dancing like all the other kids um, in the recital, I would stop and wave at my parents, hi. And so the teacher told me that she didn't think, uh, ballet was for me. So my first, uh, my first career didn't work out, but um, I always wanted to, I guess part of me always wanted to be a writer, but I was intimidated by it. I didn't know how you went about becoming an author. So I didn't actually start writing my first book until I was about 23. Good question. There are so many qu good questions. It's hard to pick ones to read aloud. Um, Charlotte, age five asks, what is your favorite color and what is baby mouse's favorite color too? Oh, so my favorite color is actually yellow. <laughs> I love yellow. Um, and baby mouse's favorite color is pink, obviously, because in all, for all the sharp eyed readers, when you go through the comics, you will always see baby mouse will always have a pink heart on her wherever she is. Dragons. I mean, I did, we did do Baby Mouse Dragon Slayer. So we do have one dragon Baby Mouse book, but probably besides that, I don't think so. But that's a good question. I've never been asked that. So what's the connection between Mad Scientist Baby Mouse? So Mad Scientist was what we call a mashup. It was Mad Scientist is when Baby Mouse meets Squish. She like discovers him and then after Mad Scientist, Squish got his own series. So Baby Mouse pretty much um, introduces Squish to the readers. So good question, really good question. All right, we have a question from Layla, age seven. What does your desk look like? What do you keep on it? Well, I think I can show you, let's see. Um, I'm going to, let me just unplug my computer. Well, right now, it's not, it's pretty clean, I have, um, it's a, it's a clear desk. It's like I've got, I got some books on it. I got baby mouse. I got some lipstick, got my phone, got some iced tea, got my notes about what time to do Zooms today. So I like to keep my desk really clean usually. Um, uh, that way, if I'm doing art or laying things out, I can, um, all that, you know, it's not too clean today. Um, so I have plenty of space to work. Good question. And Tawny is asking, do you like to paint and draw too? Ah, so actually I don't. <laughs> so, I mean, Matt is the artist in the family. I would say I don't have much skill in painting or drawing. I'm pretty much a stick figure artist, but I think I have an okay eye when it comes to laying things out. Um, but no, I don't paint or draw. So the, the, the artist in my family here in my house is my daughter, Millie. She's 13 and she draws all the time. I think my the favorite book that I've written is this book right here. Let me pull it off. It is called Sunny Side Up. And it's a graphic novel too, like Baby Mouse, except it's in color. And it takes place during the 1970s, and that's where I when I grew up. And it's about a girl named Sunny who spends the summer at with her gramps at an over 55 retirement community. So I had a lot of fun writing this book. Okay, we have Eloise, age eight. Why did you make it so Baby Mouse knows the narrator is there? So that is really funny. So that actually started by an accident. Sometimes, sometimes you get creative when accidents happen. So when I started, when Matt and I started working on Baby Mouse, like I mentioned, we weren't actually living near each other. At that time, I was living in Maryland and he was in upstate New York. And we were actually sending things back and forth by FedEx. We didn't have scanners yet. And so when I was laying things out, like I showed you how I laid out the artwork, 
I would, because I was a little, you know, I was trying to amuse myself. I would write funny little snarky comments to Matt. And those snarky comments actually became the narrator. Like I would say, oh, poor baby mouse. I would write, you know, by the artwork. And, and he thought that was funny. So he started putting that in as the narrator. So it was just kind of a funny accident. All right, and we have another question about what's what's the difference between writing a graphic novel and a regular novel? So I think for me, the really big difference is that I get to collaborate when I'm writing graphic novels, and I much prefer that um, because if I get stuck or if I get writer's block or I need just need some help with a funny joke, I can just I can just ask Matt. So I love having a buddy to work with, um, and. Obviously the difference if I'm just writing my own novel. So this is my, I just had, this just came out about two weeks ago. It's a new novel called The Lion of Mars and it takes place on Mars. The difference with this is that mostly I have to just use my own head to write it. Sometimes I'll bounce things off of my kids or my husband or my editor. Um, but because I don't have a buddy to help me, it usually takes longer. So this book took me four years to write because I didn't have someone to help me out. Good question. <laughs> That's great. Um, to keep it simple, I think, so you always know who she is. It's just kind of what we do. She's always in the same outfit. And it's a bit more of a fantasy world. I mean, she's a talking mouse. There's a talking giraffe and a weasel. So fashion isn't as much of an issue, I guess. <laughs> I've never been asked that, but good question. Everybody wants to know. So in the in these books, she's in elementary school. We don't ever actually say what her age is, so it's up to you, the reader, to imagine. But the middle school books, she's in middle school. So she's in, in these books, she could be any age from first to fifth. And in the middle school books, she could be from six to eight, I would say. Okay, we have a question from Lauren, age nine. What is your next book going to be called? So the next book coming out is from the Sunny series. So the most recent Sunny Side Up book is called Sunny Rolls the Dice. This came out about one year ago. The new one is coming out in September and it's called Sunny Makes a Splash. And if you're a Sunny reader, it's about Sunny, it's her, it's summertime and it's about her having her first job. She works at the snack bar at the public pool. And then we actually have a follow-up question for the Sunny. How, where did you get your ideas for Sunny? So for Sunny, um, the location and the, the era, the 70s, that, that was, you know, inspired by my childhood. I grew up in the 1970s. I remember what it was like during the bicentennial. The bicentennial was 1976, and that was a big birthday for America. It was the 200-year 200, 200, um, anniversary of America. Um, and another inspiration I got from it was that my own Gramps, he actually um, lived in a retirement community in Vero Beach, Florida. And I used to love visiting him there because it was kind of fun and wacky being the only kid when there were a lot of old people everywhere. So. Oh, I think Baby Mouse's hobbies are reading books and her imagination, imagining cool new things. My hobbies are, uh, my newer hobby is since moving down here, we live pretty near the beach. So I like to bike to the beach and bike around. But the thing I've been doing in the last year is I, I'm learning how to golf, which is kind of not something you expect me to say, but it's very zen and very calming. So I am learning how to, how to swing a golf club. I am not sure. So Matt and I have made about 40 books together, I think. Um, and I've probably done about 15 on my own. So I think we're probably in the 50 to 60 range together. All right, Charlotte, age five asks, will the baby mouse have a book where she lives with COVID-19 like we do? No, <laughs> we won't. Baby Mouse is pure escapism. She's not going to be living with COVID. But if you're kind of interested in that theme, ironically, 
in the line of Mars, something like that happens. So I can show you a quick sneak peek of the line of Mars. Hang on. I'm going to share my screen and I'll give you a, a quick little um, intro to what the line of Mars is about. Let me just go down. And let me share my screen. So, oops, I did not mean to do that. Sorry. I want to play from this slide. Here we go. Play from current slide. Okay. So the Lion of Mars actually takes place in the year 2091 on Mars. And it's about a boy named Bell. He's 11 years old and he lives in the American territory on Mars. And he has a cat named Leo. And he lives there with a bunch of other kids who are kind of like his family. Um, there's a boy named Trey, a girl named Vera, another girl named Flossie, and a boy named Albie. There's a bunch of grown-ups, and they're pretty much a family. They actually live underground on Mars. They don't live on the surface. They live in what's called a lava tube. It is a big cave, basically. This is kind of a cool schematic of how I imagine their, their habitat looks like. But basically, he's a regular kid who lives on Mars. He has lessons. He has chores. One of his chores is to collect the dust. So the dust on Mars is very fine. It's, and so it can be a little dangerous if you breathe it in. And so they have filters that catch the dust. So one of his chores is emptying the filters. He also works in the garden where they raise algae because they use algae for food, like smoothies. And they also use the algae to make toilet paper. Um, and Bell is really obsessed with earth animals because the only animal he's ever seen is a cat because he came to Mars when he was a baby. So he's really interested in the whole concept of animals on earth. So what happens in the line of Mars at the beginning of book is there is a crash by a mysterious object. And they can't tell what it was that crashed. It, it crashed and it shook the whole settlement. And some people think it might have been a meteorite, and some people in the settlement think it could have been an alien ship that crashed. But the teenagers and kids being kids, they want to see what it was. They're really curious. So they take a rover, which they're not supposed to, and they go and look for it. See, in my version of Mars, there are different settlements. Um, different countries have underground settlements and they're connected to each other by an underground railroad. There's France and Finland, there's Russia and China. But the American settlement, the kids there are not allowed to um, interact with any of the foreign settlements because of something that happened long ago. In fact, the grown-ups tell them that the foreign settlements are dangerous, that the kids don't really listen. And they take the rover and they go to look for what crashed and they have a rover accident and they get in trouble. A little bit later in the book, a shipment of supplies arrive to Mars. You know, supplies like things they need, like um, tools, but also food, like chocolate. And there's a stowaway in the ship, a little mouse. And the kids find the mouse, and they love this mouse, and they name it Muffin because they find this mouse eating a muffin. And they put it in a little terrarium. Unfortunately, the mouse brings something with it, too because rodents carry disease, right? During the Black Plague, rodents carried illness. And this little mouse has brought, a little, has brought an earth illness to Mars. And all of the adults get sick, but the kids don't. So the kids end up having to take care of the adults. And there's about six adults. And they, and they do this for a few weeks. And then after that, they realize they, they just can't do it anymore. They need some help. They can't get any help from Earth because to get a ship from Earth to Mars is going to take four months. So they realize they're going to have to get some help from the other countries on Mars. And so they go into the Bell and Trey, go into the Underground Railroad on Mars, and they take a train to the next settlement. And who knows what happens, but that's that's the little story of the line of Mars. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Let me go back up to here. Oops. Uh, stop sharing. Okay, back to questions. <laughs> I don't know. I've never thought of that. I have no idea what state she's in. What state do you think she lives in? I'm not sure. Uh, California? I, I think if she was smart, she should live in California, I think. Hmm. 
where do I live? So I live in a town called Costa Mesa. It is, it is south of Los Angeles and it's 20 minutes from Disneyland. So my husband can bike ride to Disneyland from where we live. So we're kind of by the ocean. Okay, uh, Emma age eight asks, is there a read aloud? There is not a read aloud um, for baby mouse, unfortunately, but, but you should just act it out, act it out with some buddies. And then we have a question from Ren. I draw all the time and want to make my own graphic novel. Nice. How do you get publishers interested in making your book? Any advice for me? Yeah, that is a great question. Well, you know what? So Scholastic has a program called the Young, I think it's called the Young Authors Program. And once a year, you can submit your story to Scholastic. So keep your eye peeled for that, or maybe Google up like Scholastic Young Author Program. And um, it's for actual kids to try to get there and they'll do a limited, um, I think they, they publish a couple of your books or you know, a couple um, copies of, a, of the winner's book. Oh, I want you to read you. Unfortunately, I, I, I don't think I can read you a story. Let me see. Um, We're kind of running out of time, my dear. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, so. yeah. Maybe another time, though. Maybe another time. Okay. Oh, the readathon starts tomorrow. So look in the chat. It, if you go to scfkids.org, you can be part of the readathon. All right, I think we have time for one more question. Um, oh, the pressure is hard to pick one. Oh, no. Oh, um, Al Alexa and Austin are asking, um, how did you choose to use animals in your Baby Mouse series instead of humans? Yeah, so actually, um, I, always saw it as, I always saw her as a mouse. Um, but Matt was more comfortable drawing animals in the beginning. It was he for when he started doing the Sunny book, he had to learn how to draw people. So it was like he needed a little bit more training. So it was a little easier for him at first. But really good question. Well, friends, this has been so much fun to spend time with kids from my old town. So you guys, you keep reading. And if you want a book, pop by the reading bug. And I think... Um, our friend from um, SCEF Readathon will probably tell you a little thing about what's going on now. Well, thank you so much, Jenny. That was amazing. And thank you everybody for joining today. It was really great. Um, at 4 p.m. we have, an there's another um, uh, author event with Jenny and she'll be talking more about her brand new book, The Lion of Mars. It's geared a little bit more towards middle school kids, but anybody can join. It's, um, it's open and free for everybody. Um, and again, we want to thank our partners at the San Mateo County Library, um, our wonderful librarians who've helped us out today. I want to also thank the Reading Bug who's helped us out um, and introduced us to Jenny and um, they're offering her all of her books for sale down at their bookstore downtown. And um, and in the San Carlos Education Foundation Readathon kicks off tomorrow. It's very exciting, our two-week readathon. There's a link in the chat um, of our website if you haven't checked it out already at um, scaffkids.org uh, slash read2021. And there you can see where to sign up for the readathon. It's a totally free. And um, we really would love everyone in the San Carlos School District to sign up. Um, and there's a bunch of great reading resources there too, with some read alouds for those kids that like read alouds and a bunch of other really cool fun stuff. Plus a minute tracker, you can track your minutes. Um, and, and yeah, just thank you everybody. This has been fantastic. And um, maybe we'll see some of you guys at four o'clock today for the other author event with Jenny. Thank you.